Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are continuing to go through some little golden books. I have here The Little Red Caboose, apparently part of the Billion Golden Memories edition. Ah, <laughs> some type of contest back in the day. Yeah. Join the Little Golden Books Billion Golden Memories celebration. 100,000 in prizes. Two grand prizes, six first prizes, 12 second, 43rd, 504th, plus 7,000 bonus prizes. Hmm. And there's actually an old video camera in there along with, I believe, a TV and a VCR. Mm-hmm. Wow, high-end prizes were back then. Yeah. Because the first prize was a Zenith Home Video Entertainment Center TV, VCR, and video camcorder. The grand prize was a seven-day cruise to the Caribbean for a family of four, two adults and two kids, including round-trip airfare and stateroom accommodations, plus 2000 in cash. So this was a commemorative edition hmm. of the book. You have just selected one of the best-selling Little Golden Books ever. Since the series was introduced in 1942, over 900 titles have been published and over a billion books sold. To commemorate the billion golden memories these colorful little books have brought to millions of children, editions of this and other all-time favorite little golden books have been specially printed. Now a whole new generation can enjoy keepsake editions of storybooks that parents and grandparents remember with delight. Hmm, neat. Mm-hmm. And there was a bonus offer on the contest, too. Share your favorite memory of little golden books with us and you'll receive a free book worth at least four ninety five, limited to the first 7,000 respondents. Hmm. And this uh, ran from March to December of 1987. Wow, I was like five. Yeesh. <laughs> All right, so The Little Red Caboose, story by Marion Potter, pictures by Tibor Gurgly. Gurgly? G-E-R-G-E-L-Y. Sorry. <laughs> We're probably completely pronouncing that wrong. I apologize to... The illustrator. Who, I can already tell by the first page here, does a wonderful job. So for Andrew, Pamela, and Rebecca. Oh, this was an early Little Golden Book. Uh, copyright 1953. That's probably why it was part of the Billion Golden Memories. The Little Red Caboose always came last. This artist has a lot of fun with perspective. Because we have the perspective of here, but then we have the rest of the train all the way off in the distance. And it's slightly distorted, but in that fun way to give it more character. First came the big black engine, puffing and chuffing. Then came the boxcars. It's a very simplistic style, but it has a lot of character to it. Nice colors, nice signs. Though it kind of looks like that guy's riding on top of a giant hay bale because you can't actually see the wagon that has the hay. Yeah, it says you have motor-driven vehicles, bicyclists, and a horse-drawn vehicle all waiting for the train to pass. Then the oil cars, then the coal cars. That's definitely an old-fashioned train. Oh, and there's a circus with some elephants and some more cars that would hold animals and probably go on the train tracks as well, or on a wagon at least. I'm mm -hmm. thinking those versions are more of the wagon version. But those kind of remind me of train cars, so that's why I said train car. And there's a clown. Actually, mm. there's two clowns. And the ringleader. And there's a beach in the background with a boat launch and some boats and people jumping off a diving board. And there's that fun with the perspective again, using the train itself as a nice framing device to separate the circus from the normal area up top with the road and the beach. Mm -hmm. And it's also very well divided because on the left-hand side you have the oil cars, and on the right-hand side you have the coal cars. And that matches where the text is located. Then the flat cars. Sometimes they were switched around in different ways, but the little red caboose always came last. There's some very nicely illustrated cows, a boy going fishing, some people rowing the boat underneath the bridge the train cars are going over. And just the use of perspective here just really does a nice job of illustrating where it wants your eyes to go. The train tracks, of course, point to the train, but the perspective's twisted in such a way that it really pulls you into the train. Boys and girls waved at the big black engine. They listened to the boxcars and the oil cars 
and the coal cars and the flat cars go clickety-clack. Once again, the use of twisting or flattening out or exaggerating the perspective to really draw your eyes to where it wants you to follow and the boys and girls running alongside on horses, which isn't mentioned. There's a lot of mix of horse-drawn carriages and cars in this. Considering the time period it was originally printed, yeah. Uh, very much fitting for the time period. But by the time the little red caboose came along, the boys and girls were turning away because the little red caboose always came last. Oh, smoke, said the little red caboose. I wish I were a flat car, or a coal car, or an oil car, or a box car, so the boys and girls would wave at me. How I wish I were a big black engine, puffing and chuffing way up at the front of the train. But I'm just the little old red caboose. Nobody cares for me. I also like how when they're illustrating the caboose, they have these big red, I'm guessing reflectors, or lights, to basically use that as its eyes. One day the train started up a mountain. Up went the big black engine. Up went the box cars. Up went the oil cars. Up went the coal cars. Up went the flat cars. Up went the little red caboose. Wow. Once again, the perspective is really nice at drawing you to the engine and then also illustrating this nice background on the other page. Because you can see the city, a road coming down from, once again, I'm assuming a church because of its prominence and the spires. And there's lots of animals gathered around. I have a feeling they'll be important on the next page. <laughs> Hang on tight, little caboose, called the flat car. This is a long, tall mountain, and you are the last car on the train. Don't I know it, sighed the little red caboose. Poor me. The train went slower and slower and slower. Soon it was hardly moving. It looked as if that train could not get up the mountain. Where did these Indians come from and why are they on the mountain? I don't know. This is probably an illustration that you wouldn't have if they re-released the book with a different illustrator. Mm. Which we have seen happen with Little Golden Books. The modern version of Pantaloon is a different illustrator than the copy I have. Mm. The dog's not even the same color or the same type of dog. Mm. And why would anyone put their camp right by the railroad tracks? Because it's not just Indians alongside the tracks. There are teepees and cook fires and things that suggest that this is a settlement. And why would you put a settlement by a train track? I mean, I know the train drives through the town and all that, but you're talking Western versus Native and all that fun stuff. Look out, little caboose, called the flat car. The train is starting to slip back down this long, tall mountain. Not if I can help it, said the little red caboose. And he slammed on his brakes. And he held tight to the tracks. And he kept that train from sliding down the mountain. Okay, I didn't realize that was a function of them, because I thought all the cars would have brakes. Also, back to animals again. And a tall mountain going up the thing with a lumberjack by the looks of it. And a train in the background. Uh-oh. Yeah, like another train coming up on them. Then, bump! The little red caboose felt something push him from behind. It was two big black engines. They pushed the train up to the top of the mountain. And now we have mountain climbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just to show how tall this mountain is. Yeah. Once again, why are there Indians? I don't know. It might have been popular at the time. Mm. We couldn't have done it, said the big black engines, if it had not been for the little red caboose. Everyone cheered and the little red caboose nearly burst with pride. Now, children wave at the big black engine and at all the cars, but they save their biggest waves for the little red caboose, because the little red caboose saved the train. Um, how did they know? Yeah, I could see the people who were actually there knowing, but how did the story get around? Like, did the trains tell the other trains and the trains talk to people? Because apparently trains are sentient in this universe. 
nothing like Thomas the Tank Engine, though, because that's creepy when you really look into it. Yeah, it really is. And also, there's no faces or anything drawn on these trains. You have a suggestion of eyes for the caboose, but... Everything else looks pretty standard. Yeah, all of the different cars look like train cars, not like sentient, you know, where they have the eyes or, you know, the grill serves as a mouth or any of that stuff. So what are your thoughts on it? Hmm. Interesting, because nobody hated the Little Red Caboose. It's just the train was so long that people were done waving by the time it went past. And so he felt underappreciated. So now the Little Red Caboose actually truly does something that helps save the train and presumably people because there has to at least be an engineer or conductor on the train. So at least one human plus all the cars plus the cargo. And something I didn't mention because I didn't talk about the last page of art, there's a wreath on the back of the caboose. So they really appreciated him because apparently they tossed a wreath onto him. Yeah, because it's like, okay, how did they get that wreath on there? Because they've all been respectfully staying behind the railroad crossing signs. They're not supposed to get on train tracks or near a train when it's in motion. Maybe it stopped somewhere and they were in range. Possible, because it's not a passenger train, though. It's a cargo train, because we see the flat cars and the coal cars and the oil cars and, well, box cars, none of which are passenger cars. And the repetition of reading and saying the different types of cars over and over, it's the way a lot of children's books are written, that repetition and saying similar things over and over to kind of get that the words to stick. But there was nothing wrong with the little red caboose, but apparently he had to go do something extra in order to get any social interaction. And instead of just getting plain social interaction, he's now getting hero worship. Hmm, because you have to save the day to get noticed. Apparently so. But it's kind of like the little train who could, except the little caboose that could. It's kind of the opposite, because the little engine who could was at the lead and had to do the pulling to get up the mountain. This time, the train couldn't make it up the mountain, and the caboose kept it from falling. Oh, that wreath that's in the last page is also on the cover. Yes, well, if you notice, the children are actually waving at the caboose, which at the beginning of the story doesn't happen. Well, it's really interesting how every time the caboose is there, you also see a lot of animals. I'm not sure the reasoning on that. Or is it just that there's always a lot of animals in the shots? Because so many of the shots are of the caboose. Because the caboose isn't in this shot, but you still have a lot of animals because you have the horses and the dogs. Yeah, but it seems like more wild animals appear when it's just the caboose in the shot. Well, except for this shot that has the whole entire train and then it's a bunch of animals. Near the engine. See, and here you only have the horses and a dog or two. But here you have a lot more animals. It's more focused on the caboose. But here you don't have any animals. You just have the mountain climbers, unless you count the skein of birds overhead. Hmm. And pretty much no wild animals in the second to last spread. Though well, this is also where the caboose is getting more noticed. Apparently near the end, when the caboose is getting more noticed by the people, it's important to have the people in shot. And then, of course, when they don't need the people anymore, it's back to wild animals. Though only a couple of squirrels and two rabbits. Yeah, because most of the focus is on the caboose being pulled along the tracks. So I can see where some of the lessening is good because the little red caboose didn't change himself. He didn't become a boxcar or try to take on the place of the lead engine. He's still a caboose. He just found something worthwhile that he could do, which was apparently all he wanted. Well, all he wanted was to be noticed. But much like Naruto, you have to do more than just be a bright color. You have to actually do something. I also found out something recently about Naruto, but I can talk about that another time. <laughs> Yes. So this has been The Little Red Caboose, story by Marion Potter, pictures by Tibor, so sorry, Gurgly. Yeah, that last name. We apologize so much. G-E-R-G-E-L-Y. And this particular one is a commemorative edition from Billion Golden Memories. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, there are lots of other Ember's Reading Room entries, including a whole playlist of Little Golden Books. Want to track down this specific little golden book? Apparently it was one of the most popular since they did a re-release for the Billion Golden Memories event. Check below for an Amazon link. We do try to always provide them for the books. 
especially if we can find them still in print. Though commemorative edition, you probably have to get that one used. Uh, just feel like shopping? Uh, we usually put in a plain Amazon link. Also, Ebates, uh, sign up and get cash back for shopping at stores you probably already shop at anyways. So for Amazon, we do get a slight kickback for purchases. And for Ebates, we get a one-time kickback if you sign up for the account and make a qualifying purchase, which, by the way, is $25. You know, $25 is pretty easy to spend at, like, Target, Walmart, Petco, Neiman Marcus, Macy's, you know, some of the stores that are on Ebates. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.